Man in the moon, I see you are out there in your full moon glory and splendor, as I hope to be this Saturday night at the Pyramid Corners High School Fall Cotillion. See, this is my freshman year, so it is my first cotillion. And in a town where there is not a lot to look forward to, I have looked forward to this dance all my life. Naturally, I do not have a dress, and I do not have a date. And it does not escape me that I am set up for disaster. <laughs> Though I have been asked to this dance by three freshman boys in various stages of hormonal disarray, <laughs> I hold on to the hope that the clear-complected, dark-haired senior boy from next door will show up on my front porch with a carnation in his hand and say, It's you. It's always been you. Let's dance the night away. He's here, Brother Jane. It's him. Riley Roberts from next door. He says he wants to see you. He says he wants to ask you something. This is it. This is it. This is it. She fell for it. <laughs> People say God looks out for the working man. Sure hope he's looking out for me These empty pockets need a helping hand Kitchen table's full of family job I did on her love seat. You are spectacular. <laughs> Thank you very much. This high pile red velvet she picked out was just a pleasure to work with and pretty ooh. It's such an object of beauty I frankly hate to see it leave my house. $150. Take it away. <laughs> my mother said she'll send somebody by later to pick it up. Who are you going out with right now? I'm currently available. Good. Good. <laughs> Dream of Donathan? Oh, hello, Dorothy Jane. My mother asked me to be sure you use the double self cushions like she asked for. Yes, I did. And just so as you can be sure, what say we give it the Chucky Lee Torkelson official butt test? No, let's not do that. <laughs> Chucky Lee? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> do you see any butt marks? Uh, no. Another satisfied customer. You don't like the way I did that? You have a very interesting family. Thank you. You are stunning. Yeah, you better hold me back. I'm on my way to Vanita to pick up my cotillion gown. I had it special ordered. What does your dress look like? Uh, it's indescribable, Dreama. I look forward to seeing it. Dorothy Jane, Desi's on the front porch. Nobody! <laughs> Sister, hater. <laughs> Any phone calls for me? Not yet, honey. Anybody come to the door yet? Any mail of an invitational nature? Dorothy Jane, you have had no less than three perfectly functional freshman boys come to that front door and ask for the honor of escorting you to this school dance, and you sent them all packing. They were geeks. They surely were. <laughs> but they were real geeks. Not some dream fantasy of the too old for you boy next door charging over here to sweep you off your feet. Get over this. Mama, I don't see why you're trying to burst my bubble. Honey, you have already missed three buses to the dance, and there may not be any more buses coming by. You have two days left. Well, what do you think I should do? I think you should stand beside your locker with a sign around your neck that says available except in all offers. <laughs> 
mail up out of your mailbox, and I'm going through it here, not that I'm a busybody, but I couldn't help but notice that your boarder Hodges got another return to sender letter. And I believe this is his third one from this Molly Jeffers. Now, who is this woman? What's going on? You're not supposed to read other people's mail. Oh, shut up. <laughs> now, you still got good eyes, honey. What does this look like to you? Curiosity killed the cat. No, that was a different cat. That cat was curious about this big truck that was coming down the highway. The cat that read the letter to Bootsy went on to receive one dollar cash money. Now, what's this say? I don't know. I can't read yet. Now, Bootsy, why do you need to know what's in Mr. Hodge's return letters? Because he's a man of mystery. I'm intrigued by him. You just don't know something about somebody and it's about to kill you. I don't need to know nothing about this letter. I do not need to know nothing about nothing. Good morning. What's in the letter, Hodges? <laughs> All right, I'm sick. <laughs> Thank you. You know, people in this town confide in me. You know why? Because I am a very good listener, and I care about the human condition, just like Paul Harvey on the radio. What are you doing Saturday night? Actually, I was planning to go on over to Cootie's Bluff Cherokee Bingo. Well, so was I. I swear to God. Back off, Bootsy. You're like a rabid dog. <laughs> well, why don't we go together? We could save on gas, and we could get to know one another. How do you mean? Well, you could tell me about your hopes, your aspirations, your mail. Man in the Moon, you are seriously stringing me out. I got one day and a half for you to come through, or while the rest of my friends and acquaintances are dancing their hearts out at this cotillion, I will be sitting in my room writing a help me letter to Alyssa Milano, Care of Team Beat magazine. Talking to yourself again, lunatic? Hey, Stephen Floyd. Hey, nutbag. You know, you keep talking to the moon, nobody's going to marry you. Well, I'm not worried about getting married just yet, Stephen Floyd. I don't blame you. You can't even get yourself a date to the dance. She's just particular, Stephen Floyd. Oh, what do you know, Chucky Lee? She's desperate, and she's going to be a desperate old dried-up spinster. Like Florence Tank, the library lady. Miss Hank is like 30 years old. Don't be a library lady, Dorothy Jane. <laughs> be honored to be a library lady. I mean, libraries are where poetry is and history and great romantic literature. Yeah, and 30-year-old dried-up dead women. <laughs> hey, Dorothy Jane! Oh, no. There's your dream date, Kirby Scroggins. No, don't leave. Hey, Kirby, go for it. Uh, if you got a minute, there's something I want to ask you for the third time. I don't want you with him. I'm sorry, Dorothy Jane. He's your last chance. Chucky library lady. <laughs> Don't do that. Do what? Look at me with those I've been left in the pet shop window too long puppy eyes. I like to look at you. Well, snap out of it. There's nothing here for you. <laughs> now listen, Dorothy Jane. This is the last time I'm going to ask you to the cotillion tomorrow night. And if you say no this time, then I'm not going. Ooh, do I hear a buzz? <laughs> no, Mrs. Torkelson. It's just me. Don't do this, Mother. So, do you want to go to the dance or what? Dorothy Jane, the favor of your reply is being requested. Uh... Last bus. <laughs> Pulling away from the bus stop. No more buses. Walking home. Uh... Hong Kong. Yes, yes, all right, I'll go. Nailed it. I nailed it. This is as beautiful as I always thought. Thank you, Dorothy Jane. You won't regret this. No, I'm sure I won't, Kirby. This is the happiest moment of my life. Well, we'll leave you two dance birds alone. Dorothy Jane! It's him, it's him! Right behind me, he's coming. Riley Roberts, this is really, truly it. I'm not falling for that no, man with that. He's right back. Cut it out. No, don't the set box. I've only accepted the Kirby really? Scoggins invitation, no. and I'm he's, going to the cotillion with right. him. He's here. There he is. Oh, you're going to the cotillion. I was going to just ask you about that. Oh, my God. Well, ask away, Roberts, because me and Dorothy Jane took cotillion classes. In the fourth grade. So we know all about it. We'll see our dip. <laughs> you wanted to ask me something about the cotillion, Riley? Yeah, I did, but you have company, and this isn't the best time. Look, Mother, isn't this the strangest thing? Another bus. Honk. <laughs> Riley Roberts was going to ask.
just meet you the dance. Honey, he just came by the front porch. He is our neighbor. He goes by the front porch every day. It's not personal. It's geographical. <laughs> he does not go by the front porch. Stop and want to ask me something about the cotillion every day. I am reading in this month's Family Circle this highly uplifting article about mothers and daughters who love each other. And what do you think you want to ask him? Of course, these are celebrities. <laughs> I'll never know what he wanted to ask me because he just heard me say that I was going to the dance with Kirby Scroggins. Well, maybe you broke his heart. That would be even better than going to the cotillion. You think I broke his heart? No, I don't think you broke his heart. You don't think I can do anything? I think you're going with a boy who is fond of you and have a perfectly wonderful time. He's gonna dip me. Hey, neighbor boy. Yeah, you. Come on here and settle this. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> we will have peace in this kitchen, and you two will start behaving more like Naomi and Winona. Don't do this. Hello. Hi. Uh, you wanted to talk to me? Yeah, about this day. <laughs> Bootsy and I were just wondering. Why you do not talk. All right. <laughs> we were wondering if a big city boy would have imported one of his big city girlfriends for this dance tomorrow night, or we'll be escorting one of our local senior girls. Okay, that works too. <laughs> oh, I'm going with Haley Cotton. I asked her about three weeks ago. Do you know her, Dorothy Jane? Haley? Oh, yeah, I've seen her around. She's real nice. Um, wasn't there something you wanted to ask my granddaughter about this cotillion? Yeah, uh, well, what I wanted to ask you is if you could show me some dance steps for this spotlight dance I heard about where you have to waltz, because I have no idea how to waltz, and I thought that you might know how. Yes, do you need me to show you? Well, I did before, but you were there with your boyfriend, so I just had Haley show me a couple of steps. So I will see you at the dance. Bye-bye. This place is a veritable reupholstery gold mine. It's a Salvation Army. Well, it's certainly been our salvation, Dorothy Jane. I'm going to purchase one of these $12 antiques that still has good bones. I'm going to gut it. I'm going to stuff it and finish it with the spare red velvet. And Dream of Donathan's mother's love seat is going to have itself a matching baby brother. I want a baby brother. No. <laughs> Mother, you said we were just going to make a quick stop before we went to buy the fabric for my cotillion dress. All right, all right. I'll have the sales lady put a sold sign on this little beauty here. Come on, Mary Sue. <laughs> Dorothy Jane? Dorothy Jane Clarkelson, Peyton Mother than Booker. <laughs> Mary Sue, the entire world does not need to know that I am in the Salvation Army. Don't lick my hand. <laughs> <clears throat> Isn't this the most beautiful cotillion gown you ever saw? Either tell me you're kidding or kill me right here. No! It still has the original price tag on it. $95 marked down to $7.99. Now, you don't see that often. Please, can we go? And it's from Adriana's dress shop. Adriana's? That's a boutique in that double-decker mall in Vanita. Look, it's never even been worn! It's got a pretty black Splotch. It's got a big old stain on the side is why it's never been worn. I could camouflage it with a silken rose. Take it up a little here, shorten it to about here. It... Look at you. Well, it almost does look good on me. And it has never been worn. And at $7.99, we could maybe even buy you a pair of new shoes. Here? No. Sold. <laughs> Now, Mr. Hodges, I expect you'll have my mother-in-law back by 11 o'clock. Yes, ma'am. Well, all right. You seem like a fine boy. You two have a nice night. We're not going anywhere. Can y'all see my granddaughter come down all done up for a beautiful, romantic, first fall cotillion dream dance? Dorothy Jane, get your butt down here. I won't play bingo. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't I look all right? You look fine, honey. You look like dress up Barbie. <laughs> you did her hair real nice, Boo. Well, I was gonna frost your tips, but I didn't want to give you a heart attack. I appreciate that. Any boy should be mighty proud to have you on his arm, Dorothy Jane. 
Thank you, Mr. Hodges. Yeah, I guess it does look kind of nice. But I wish I didn't have to think of it as a Salvation Army dress. It is not a Salvation Army dress. It's been reincarnated into Dorothy Jane Torkelson's fall cotillion gown. And it looks beautiful on you. Thanks, Mama. I have something for you. This is a cameo likeness passed down from my mother. It was a present for my first dance. Now, I know it's only plastic, but it was filled with my mother's dreams for me. And now, it's filled with my dreams for you. And those aren't plastic. Sometimes, seeing as how we have such similar taste. Gee, I really like that. Of course, there's one little problem. What's that? I don't shop at the Salvation Army. <laughs> well, neither do I. Liar. You're wearing a Salvation Army dress right now, and I ought to know. Because I'm the one who donated it to charity. Maybe it just looks like your dress. I can prove it. See that old fake flower? Covering up the stain where my little brother spilled a bottle of black shoe polish. Dorothy Jane. Riley. Hey, they're about to have that spotlight dance, and I was hoping you would dance with me. You're going to dance with Dorothy Jane? Wearing my old throwaway Salvation Army dress? It is not your Salvation Army dress. It has been reincarnated as my fall cotillion gown. And it looks beautiful on you. I can't imagine it looking more beautiful on anyone else. Every girl around the world wants that one perfect love. Handsome and gallant. Everybody's watching, and I only know the couple of waltz steps I learned, so try and make me look good. I will. Just plain beginner's luck. 
Beginner's luck's all that was. I never seen such beginner's luck all my life. Nevertheless, it was a lot of fun, Miss Torkelson. Of course it was fun for you. You kept hopping up out of your chair and shouting bingo all night long. Good night, Border Hodges. I believe I have a feel for the game. I believe I have a feel for the game. <laughs> Why is your mother-in-law so agitated? She tried to get you to tell her what was in those return letters, didn't she? All night. And you wouldn't tell her, would you? Nope. I showed him a perfectly wonderful evening. I unleashed adventure into his soul. And look how he repays me. He keeps his personal business to himself? You have a personality flaw. <laughs> Molly Jeffers is my six-year-old granddaughter. A while back, her daddy, who was my only son, passed away. Her mother met a new man who lives in the Northeast and has a family full of money. She took Molly there to live with her and is trying to wipe Molly's old oaky grandpa from her memory. I doubt she even shows her my letters. That's why they just keep coming back. Are you satisfied? That's about the saddest thing I ever heard. Or... <laughs> Molly Jeffers is a woman that I've been seeing off and on for the last seven years since I became a widower. She wanted to be married, but I've never quite been able to get over the love I feel for my wife. So we broke it off. Now I realize that was a mistake. And I've been trying to get in touch with her again. But I'm afraid I might have lost her for good. Because all my letters keep coming back unopened. <laughs> Night. What? <laughs> oh, this is just gonna kill you. Man in the Moon, tonight I had an actual romantic moment. It only lasted a moment, but I guess that's what a moment is. But even though I know that Riley Roberts only danced one bit of a dance with me, and all the rest of his dances with Haley Cotton, I believe that when he was dancing with me, he was having an actual romantic moment too. And even if he wasn't, so what? <laughs> <laughs>